Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. After a zero degree start this morning, we're going to see another brutally cold morning, possibly rivaling a record. Karen? An Uber driver accused of a vicious attack on a passenger. What the company is now saying is this man faces a string of charges. And we begin with breaking news in Berlin, Germany. A truck has slammed into a large crowd of people at an outdoor Christmas market. Right now, nine people are dead, another 50 injured. Let's get to defender Kevin Dietz. He's in the newsroom right now gathering the very latest information. Kevin. Steve, Karen, this all happened in a public square in the center of Berlin, which is the capital of Germany. Let's get right to the video that's coming into our newsroom from the scene. Right now, it's not clear if the driver veered into the holiday crowds on purpose or if this was an accident, but police are investigating this as a deliberate attack. Witnesses say the truck went onto the sidewalk and didn't slow down. It was going about 40 miles an hour through the crowded pedestrian area. The driver tried to run off after the crash, but police caught up with him and took him into custody. No other information about the driver is being released at this time, but police say the truck appears to have license plates from Poland. Again, nine people dead, another 50 hurt after a truck drove into a crowd of people at a Christmas market in Germany. We will continue gathering information, and as we learn more, we'll pass it along to you. Thank you, Kevin. Also breaking right now in Flint, word that Michigan's attorney general is moving to file more criminal charges stemming from the Flint water crisis. Attorney General Bill Schuette will announce a third round of criminal charges. So far, nine people have been charged in connection with actions that damaged Flint's water supply and endangered the health of Flint residents. Local 4 will be in Flint tomorrow and we will report on those new charges. And our other top story in Metro Detroit is that deep freeze that has locked in on us. Oh, it is cold out there and temps are going to keep dropping. Let's get over to Ben now and it is already dangerously cold outside, Ben. Yeah, and especially if you stepped out the door this morning when we saw these low temperatures, zero officially at Metro Airport. But look at some of these numbers in Ann Arbor and Port Huron, 12 below zero. That was the air temperature, not the wind chill, 15 below the low up there in Port Huron. Now we're going to start increasing those temperatures as far as lows tonight, but we're only talking by a couple degrees. Currently we're in the teens. We're at 11 uh, Metro 13 at City Airport, 15 up in Pontiac, Ann Arbor and South are in single numbers right now, but we'll all get there as we head towards low temperatures tonight. In fact, we're going to be very close to those lows uh, probably around 10 o'clock tonight. We'll look at your four zone forecast coming up guys. An Uber driver behind bars tonight accused of stabbing a passenger five times over the weekend in Bloomfield Township. 23 year old Jacob Alleman is facing felony charges in the attack right now. He's in the Oakland County Jail. Let's get to Priya Mann with the very latest. This is a disturbing story, Priya. And Karen, apparently this is all it took. A tap on the window. Police say the Uber driver was upset when the customer knocked on the window and that passenger ended up being stabbed repeatedly in the back seat of the Uber ride he requested. An Uber driver is accused of stabbing a customer five times after he felt the man disrespected his car. Police say 23 year old Jacob Matthew Alamon was upset after the man knocked on the side window before getting into the vehicle. The victim was stabbed in the chest, back and face. The alleged assault happened around 1.30 Saturday morning in a parking lot at Maple and Cranbrook in Bloomfield Township. Police say the victim, a 49 year old Beverly Hills man and his wife called an Uber after a holiday party. When the Uber driver pulled up, the victim says he tapped on the window to let the driver know they were about to get in. Police say the Uber driver felt that was disrespectful. It's alleged Alamon drove the couple about a mile, then ordered the passengers out of the car. Um, that's pretty scary. Police say the victim asked if they could wait for another Uber due to heavy snow Saturday morning. That's when it's alleged Alamon stabbed the victim multiple times in the back seat. A Birmingham officer in the area responded to the call and found the men fighting in a 2012 Honda Civic. The Oakland County Prosecutor's Office has charged the Berkeley man with assault with intent to do great bodily harm, less than murder. I mean, you're getting into a stranger's car anyways, so that's already a little scary, but, um, and you're supposed to trust them, but, I mean, how can you trust a stranger? In a statement, Uber says what has been described is appalling. The driver has been banned from the app and we've reached out to the Bloomfield Township Police Department to offer any assistance for their investigation. 
And I did speak with an Uber spokesperson. At this time, they will not comment on how long Alamon worked for them or if there were any prior issues, but they are defending their screening process. Now, at this time, Alamon does remain behind bars on a $250,000 bond. The victim expected to make a full recovery. Reporting live, I'm Priya Mann, Local 4. Detroit police have made one arrest in an armed robbery case. The victim was robbed at gunpoint. The crime was caught on video. Robbery happened Sunday, December 11th, outside of a gas station at East 7 Mile and Hayes. The victim was approached by one man who demanded his wallet and other possessions. All the while, another robber aimed a rifle at the victim. The rifle was equipped with a laser light. One suspect was arrested last Friday. Police are still looking for two other suspects. Trucks and SUVs are outselling cars by nearly a two to one margin. So General Motors is announcing temporary shutdowns of plants that build cars instead of trucks. GM has announced its Detroit Hamtramck assembly and Kansas City, Kansas assembly plants will be closing for three weeks. An assembly plant in Lansing will close for two weeks, while plants in Lordstown, Ohio and Bowling Green, Kentucky will close for one week. 10,000 GM assembly workers will be affected. Today in Lansing, it became official. Michigan's electors cast all 16 of the state's votes for Donald Trump. And as that was happening inside, large crowds were protesting outside. Let's get to Coco McAvoy. She is live in Lansing with all of the reaction from both sides. Coco. Karen and Steve, just a few hours ago, dozens of protesters gathered outside of the Capitol, protesting, also demanding that the Electoral College, quote, vote their conscience and reject Donald Trump. But that didn't happen, though. As expected, all 16 electors nominated Trump and Pence. It's not that of the Christian that he is portraying himself to be. The steps to the Capitol packed with people letting their voices be heard in the bitter cold before the Electoral College vote. Strong, nerd, together. Majority anti-Trump. We feel that uh, Trump is unfit to be president. I will not call him my president. A few others in favor of the president-elect. I think we need to uh, unite. I think he'll try and do that. The demonstration spilled inside of the Capitol with hundreds chanting outside of the chambers. <laughs> All 16 electors nominated Trump, ignoring the protest outside. And give him a chance, give him four years, and you know, they can vote again in four years. But uh, no, I just think that uh, this was a wonderful day. Governor Snyder echoing that statement. The law wasn't required to get these people to support um, President-elect Trump. They were excited to, and so I'm glad the process worked well today. But protesters say this isn't over. No matter how the electors vote today, none of us are ever going to stop. We are creating a movement, and we are going to prevent him from taking over this country. Now, those protesters left right after the vote without any problems. But meanwhile, the electors, also leaders of the Michigan Republican Party, celebrated about what happened here today. Reporting live this evening, I'm Coco McAvoy, Local 4, back to you. I know you were talking with some of those electors, Coco. Did they ever express any type of pressure from the protesters outside and actually might have considered to change their vote? No, Karen, of the electors that we spoke to, many of them were saying they didn't feel any pressure, actually, because it was really a tale of two different feelings outside of the chamber. People were very upset, champing, chanting and angry. But inside of those chambers, people were celebrating the fact that they nominated Trump and Pence, and they said they didn't feel any pressure. All right. Coco McAvoy, live for us tonight. Thanks, Coco. The Roaring Lions managed only a whimper yesterday on the road against the New York Giants. Not a single score from the offense. Lions lose 17 to 6. And now it looks like their shot at the playoffs may come down to that final game against Green Bay. Hmm. <laughs> the way you read that. <laughs> He's you already mean like I'm disgusted you've, with you've the whole thing. You've already given up. No. No, I'm, no, no. Just disenchanted. I'm for just a bit. disgusted with the whole thing. And he thing. shouldn't give up. I mean, they just no. came off of winning eight of nine games, five in a row, and yep. the Giants have an amazing, amazing defense. I mean, so it had been difficult for Johnny Unitas and Raymond Berry to score yesterday. However, we've got a highlight. <laughs> but the Lions, boy, did I go back on that. Well, Lions, we're gonna, about to take the lead here when Zach Zenner gets hit by Leon Hall, fumbles inside the five, and the Giants recover in the end zone. 
And the Lions didn't really seem in sync after that. Today, Jim Caldwell said he never looks back and knows the Cowboys in Dallas are next. I'm looking right straight forward at the team that we have to face. That, that's our focus. Um, and, um, you know, and I, and, I, and I think our guys understand that probably as well as anybody now. They have a real good sense of that. Um, so we don't have to worry about them that much, and we just got to focus on getting better. All right, that'll happen this week. Lions have two games left in Dallas next Monday night. Here on Sunday, January 1st against the Packers. Everyone expecting that January 1st game to be what's called flexed by NBC and moved to the evening. Big audience on that. Oh, it's going to be big. It's going to be big. It's for the division, the what, whole deal. What channel would televise that game if it's moved to Sunday night? I'm going to see what we can't do to, okay. to get it on here. I think it might be up. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? Thanks, Bernie. Thanks, Bernie. Okay. Uh, the winter months can certainly prove dangerous, but for more reasons than slick roads or shoveling snow. Head in good health, Dr. McGeorge is in to show you the toll cold weather has on our body. Nick. The holiday travel season has just begun, but we already have problems to talk about. One flight canceled, these folks didn't even know about it, and another flight lost not just one, not just two bags, but all of the bags. Warren Mayor James Fouts continues to deny that that's his voice on an audio tape disparaging the mentally disabled. Well, now a Warren City Councilman says he will give the mayor an opportunity to prove that's not him and he's willing to pay for it out of his own pocket. All right, Guy, and we continue to follow breaking news out of Berlin, Germany tonight. At least nine people have been killed after a truck slams into a crowd at a Christmas market. The driver is in custody. Investigators believe he did do this on purpose. The new, new at six. New hope for white boy Rick. The defender's breaking new information tonight that could finally punch his ticket out of prison. Will he be home in time for the holidays? I'm calling Kate. From behind cars to behind bars, a former valet now doing time for what he did at his old workplace. An apparent recording of Warren Mayor Jim Fouts insulting people with special needs has really created quite a firestorm. It is important to note Fouts still vehemently denies it's his, it's his voice on those tapes. Now at least one Warren City Council member wants proof from an expert. So let's bring in Guy Gordon live. And this is something that you already did with a voice expert. That's right, Karen and Steve. We went to uh, Ed Primo, who is a forensic analyst of audio tape, uh, to see if that was the mayor's voice. Well, now... Uh, Warren City Councilman has asked for a two page report on those very findings that we provided you on Friday, and he wants to go a step further. It embarrasses my city. Tonight I'm going to meet a group of retards. It impedes upon um, doing good government. You're not even human beings. Councilman Scott Stevens will ask City Council to demand Mayor Fouts give voice samples using the exact verbiage in the widely denounced tape. Stevens contacted the forensic specialist we used last week, who says he's now 90% certain the voice on the tape belongs to Mayor Fouts. The recording was not me. He has the expertise available to him to electronically engineer it. The tests that he's conducted on it, it's literally impossible that it was engineered. Meantime, advocates for the disabled, including Michigan Lieutenant Governor Brian Kelly and ARC of Michigan, will officially launch an anti-stigma campaign aimed at preventing further harm from the alleged words of the mayor. In all of my life, I have never ever heard comments that even come close to rivaling uh, the, the vileness in, um, in those recordings. And so uh, I thought it did, it, it required a response, but not just a response, but I wanted it to be a response that created hope for the future. Mayor Fouts was an early contributor on the campaign's GoFundMe page. He's getting strong support on his own Facebook page, but a Warren mother of a Down syndrome child has started this Facebook group, which already has 75 members. Council is expecting to hear from both sides at tomorrow night's meeting. And we understand they have asked for extra security there. Now, Councilman Stevens says he's willing to pay that $3,900 cost for a full forensic analysis of the tape. 
He says he will also provide the original tape from the person that recorded it so that they can do what they call a metadata analysis to see if it was engineered or edited in any way. In the meantime, we have once again reached out to Mayor Jim Fouts tonight to ask him uh, for his input on this, if he would submit to this test to prove whether those are his words or not. He has not responded to our request. We're live from Warren. I'm Guy Gordon, Local 4. Well, we should need to think of a new word, cold. It's not going to work. <laughs> Arctic. Um, Arctic. Yeah, there's a lot of adjectives <laughs> that we'll just keep with Arctic. Arctic probably. Have four letters <laughs> that we probably don't want to mention. Not that word. Uh, but you know what? We've made it through the worst of it. So we're now starting to very slowly uh, get milder. In fact, we'll make a, a whopping two degree improvement on the numbers that we started out with this morning. Wind speeds, though, obviously having an impact on how it feels out there. Those speeds are right now are about five to 10 miles an hour, and that's the way we expect that they'll stay tonight. So those wind chill numbers uh, still in negative territory in a lot of the locations, especially from eight miles south, two below at City Airport, four below right now in Monroe. Wind chill in Adrian, minus eight right now. A lot of clear skies, so we've gotten to see a lot of sunshine today. Uh, but as we get into tonight, and we talk about this all the time, especially in the winter months, uh, clear sky is not necessarily our friend, as it'll allow temperatures to cool very close to those dew point numbers, which are below freezing in a lot of cases. So we're looking at numbers tonight that are probably going to be down to uh, probably very close to that zero mark, uh, even though we expect it to be just slightly milder. Uh, in the at the airport for the official low high pressure is uh, just off to our south. It will start exiting to the east and as it does, we will get more of a return flow. Remember that clockwise flow of air around the high that will help boost temperatures as we get into the next couple of days. A little bit of some cloudiness comes in here uh, during the middle part of tomorrow, but it's not going to scare up any precipitation. We're going to remain dry. In fact, there's going to be a system that is going to get some snow across the UP and northern sections of the uh, lower peninsula as we get into Wednesday. We're for the most part going to move out or stay away from that, but there will be some flakes around as we get into Wednesday night and stretching into Thursday. So let's look at your four zone temperature. These are low temperatures tonight, and I think in the metro zone, we'll probably stay in positive territory, but not by much. Three degrees right there in the city. South zone, we're looking at negative numbers as you head down towards the state line. Minus one in Blissfield, Tecumseh, one below Adrian at minus two. And these numbers not going to be all that different in our west and north zone, generally between zero and three below there and same goes for areas north of M 59 will be between zero and two below for those low temperatures tonight. That's not factoring in winds and so those wind chills will likely feel like about five to ten below for most of the night. So we'll call it two, which is better than we did this morning and then we'll start looking for those temperatures to come up a little bit more consistently as we get into the seven day forecast 28 tomorrow. But look at those winds 20 to 25 miles an hour wind chills single digits for much of the day, just probably stretching into the double digits as we get into the afternoon. High temperatures are going to be at the freezing mark Wednesday through Friday. We'll have to hold on to the weekend to see those numbers get above 32, but uh, Sunday Christmas Day looks like we'll get 40 for an mm. afternoon high temperature and that's rain, not snow. So it's a wet Christmas Ooh, is crazy, but you know, it's not going to take away that snow that's out there, so it'll still be it's beautiful to look at. Yeah, thank you, Ben. Sure. Well, these two brothers can teach all of us about giving back new tonight, the massive obstacle they've overcome and how they're using that experience to help others. But first stories from across Michigan, including this devastating house fire. That's next. The local for Across Michigan tonight, we're following stories making headlines in Saugatuck Township and Monroe County. But we start in Burton near Flint. That's where a house fire kills two people. It happened before 11 Sunday morning at a home in the 6200 block of East Atherton Road. Firefighters responded quickly after getting calls from neighbors who saw smoke coming from the home. The couple inside, a 76 year old man and a 73 year old woman were killed. Investigators believe a possible cause is the fact that the couple was using their stove to heat their home. In Saugatuck Township, an investigation is underway after a woman's body was found on a playground. This is very sad and disturbing. Allegan County Sheriff's deputies say several children were actually playing at that playground Sunday afternoon, and they are the ones that made mm. this terrible discovery. Deputies were called and arrived to find the woman's body laying face down in the snow 
Investigators are now waiting for autopsy results to find her cause of death. Operations are now sure to continue at DTE Energy's Fermi 2 nuclear power plant in Monroe County. The plant has received a renewed license to continue operating into 2045. It comes after the plant began undergoing in-depth evaluations in 2014 that included inspections, program audits, and public meetings to hear from its neighbors. The original license was set to expire March of 2025, but we are sure the plant's 800 full-time workers are happy to see that renewal. New at 530. It's a place for teens to go and escape the cold. I'm Evrod Casimi. Coming up, we're going to take you inside of a home that's giving homeless and at risk teens a place to feel safe. In cold blood, a Russian ambassador gunned down inside an art museum. And now we're learning why the gunman pulled the trigger. Winter weather can be deadly, but usually not in the way you might imagine. I'm Dr. Frank McGeorge coming up the surprising way the cold kills and the factors that could put you at risk. It's the most live from downtown Detroit. Local 4 News at 530 starts now. Winter weather really takes its toll. Tonight in good health, what this Arctic weather really does to our bodies. Winter weather can prove deadly, but not just from car accidents on icy roads or heart attacks from shoveling. Cold weather takes a different toll on us. Dr. McGeorge joins us now from the icy outdoors to explain why it isn't even the most extreme cold that can kill. Doc. Well, that's exactly right. You know, whether it's cold outside or whether it's heat, when temperatures reach extremes like these, People will die as a simple result of exposure, but studies actually show it's not the extremes that are the most deadly. It's really moderate cold, basically much of the winter that's actually most deadly. The dark days of winter do more than depress us. They increase the death rate. Many studies done in different countries, including the United States, clearly show winter increases mortality on average by roughly 7.5% when compared to the most ideal temperature. In one study, the effect was greatest in areas with low living room temperatures, limited bedroom heat, and low proportions of people wearing hats, gloves, and warm coats. Basically, it was worse for people who were poorly prepared for cold weather in general. Now, in countries like the United States that experience seasonal swings in temperature, death rates are lowest around 72 degrees. As the mercury drops, our bodies change. Blood becomes more prone to form clots, increasing the risk of stroke, heart attacks, and other problems. Breathing becomes more difficult for many as airways become more sensitive and, of course, we're attacked by more infections from common cold viruses to influenza. Now, one thing that's particularly interesting is cold weather does not affect all populations the same. In fact, when you look at the data from Canada and Sweden, where the average annual temperature is in the low 40s, cold does not take as much of a toll. So it is clearly possible to limit the harm. Back to you. Doc, what about age groups? Are there, is there one group particularly that's more at risk than another? Yeah, definitely. It's in fact the elderly. It's much, much higher for them. So maybe there is probably some wisdom to being a snowbird. And at very least, as we age, if you live in the north where it's cold, it's really critical to keep warm because that's where the survival benefit is. All right. Some very good advice. Thanks a lot, Doc. We appreciate it. Now come mm -hmm. on inside and warm up. Well, Dr. McGeorge kind of talked about moderate cold. You're talking about really bitter cold. Yeah, there's no moderate in this forecast. No. Uh, it is really uh, frigid, but we still have two days of autumn left. Yeah. That's <laughs> I don't know if that helps or if it makes it worse, but uh, temperatures are in single numbers already, and the sun has it, or has uh, already gone down in some spots, I should say. Single numbers there uh, south of the city in our south zone. We're looking at double digit temperatures across most of the area. And as you work your way north, these numbers actually get warmer. A uh, 14 in Howell right now. Oxford, you're at 14 degrees and we're seeing 15 in Lapeer, Marlette and Sandusky right now. So our warmest temperatures are in our north zone. But here's how the evening's going to play out. We will slide pretty quickly down to near a record low temperature and we're not going to be far off of our lows for the night. Usually we see those around daybreak. We're going to see them at 10 more in your forecast coming up, guys. All right, thanks, Ben. All right, in this dangerous cold, at-risk teenagers who, for many reasons, may not want to, may not be able to go home, 
are left with very few options to try to stay warm. And that's where Matrix Human Services and their Matrix Off the Streets program comes in. As our Everett Cassidy shows us, they're giving teens a safe and warm place to go. It's a safe place for at-risk teens to escape the cold. We're inside of what's known as Matrix Off the Streets, and it's a home where these teens can get a second chance at life. It's real cold out there. Nobody wouldn't want to be out there. 13 year old Raja Seely calls this Matrix Off the Streets house home now. Problems at her own home almost forced the at-risk teen to live on the streets. I'm here because I was disrespecting my parents and they didn't want me there and I kept running away, you know, and just doing stuff that teens do that when they don't want to listen. That's where Matrix Off the Streets comes in. The agency has open space available to keep teens like Raja off the streets, especially during these brutally cold winter months. And we provide residential services, facilities, beds, food, counseling, life skills to our residents who are at risk of homelessness or actually homeless or runaway youth. Right now, the house is about half full. It serves up to 10 teens, ages 12 to 17, for about three weeks or more, depending on their situation. Here, they have access to things like they would in their everyday life. Every night, every youth in here, they take showers in the morning, they like wash up, they brush their teeth, wash their face, get ready to go eat um, breakfast and all that stuff, and um, go to school. Raja is thankful for the opportunity here at Matrix Off the Streets. With help from counseling sessions, she's making steps towards getting her life in order. I thank God for being here because if I wasn't here, I could probably be out there somewhere. And God, Lord, uh, only God knows what will happen. And they are still accepting teens here at this facility today. So if you know of a homeless or at-risk teen that's in need of a place to stay, just go to our website, click on Detroit.com for more information. In Detroit, at Rod Casimir, Local 4. In all, Matrix has over two dozen locations in Detroit and provides services to more than 25,000 people. The aftermath of the conflict in Syria continues. Russia's ambassador to Turkey was assassinated today in Turkey. Russia's foreign minister confirmed Ambassador Andrei Karlov was shot and killed while giving a speech at an art exhibition in Ankara. Officials say the shooter is an off-duty officer and says he shouted, do not forget Aleppo, as he opened fire on Karlov. The shooter has not been named, with Russian and Turkish officials only saying he was neutralized after the fact, but it's not known if he was arrested or killed by police. It has just become official. The Electoral College has elected Donald Trump the next president of the United States. He has hit the 270 votes required to win the election. Brian Moore is following it all from Washington. Thanks. The results won't be final for another three weeks, but don't expect any big surprises. Vote for President of the United States was 20 votes for Donald J. Trump. In presidential elections past, the counting of electoral college votes was a drama-free formality, but not this year. The votes are 10 votes, Donald J. Trump. This display in Wisconsin. And this demonstration in Phoenix. No rubber stamp! No rubber stamp! And other protests around the country served as a dramatic last stand against the presidency of Donald Trump. His opponents appealing to 538 electors to cast their ballots today for anyone else. It's probably is unlikely to happen, but it also gives it highlights. It continues to highlight the potential danger of a, of a presidency of Donald Trump. There were a few defectors, but very few. No, there's no chance that we'll lose 37 electors where Donald Trump will not be the president, uh, next president of the United States. Congress will officially count the votes on January 6th. All 11 votes have been cast for Donald J. Trump. But today, electors carried out their duties in capitals from coast to coast. I invite President Clinton to join us in casting the first ballot. In New York, former President Bill Clinton, just one member of the Electoral College chosen to represent the will of the people. Even if 37 electors had changed their votes, the final say would be up to the Republican-controlled House. In Washington, Brian Moore, Local 4. 
Holiday travel beginning to ramp up. We are only six days oh, from Christmas. My goodness, and it hasn't been all smooth sailing out there at Metro. Uh, Nick Monticelli reports from canceled flights to missing bags. The travel season isn't exactly off to a smooth start for some. Well, good evening. At the majority of the ticket counters, things are going fairly smoothly here at DTW. But as you know, when you're traveling, there can always be some kind of issues. You can run into, say, baggage problems, or your flight can be delayed, or even worse, your flight can be canceled. And when I say even worse, here's something to consider. Your entire flight could be canceled. You have to stand in this line for hours just to figure out where you're going to go. Please support the gate number. It isn't even the busiest part of the busy holiday travel season. I'm quite upset right now. And things for some already aren't off to a great start. Radhika Sharma is a med student at Wayne State. Her Spirit Airlines flight to Vegas was canceled and she was told she'll be rebooked on one in two days. We've been in this line and moved about 10 feet in the last hours. It seems to me like their attitude is tough poop. Lee Reisner was on the same flight, but he didn't know until they got all the way to the gate. Yes, they were even able to check in. We were sitting at the boarding gate, okay, and my wife noticed the sign. Does that say cancel? Yeah. But the biggest scratch your head moment came from baggage carousel number two, a spirit red eye flight from LAX. I think about maybe six bags came off. Ashley Parker and most of the passengers arrived without their bags. There was an equipment issue in LA, so Spirit baggage crews couldn't load the plane. But they never told anyone, not at the counter, not on the plane, not until they were waiting in Detroit. We stood at the conveyor belt watching six of them go by for a good 45 minutes until someone came down and said, oh, by the way, they're not coming. <laughs> So you know that cliche, pack your patience? You better pack a carry-on too. At Detroit Metro Airport, Nick Monticelli, Local 4. Well, the bags from LAX were supposed to be sent on the next flight and then delivered to each passenger by the end of today. We have reached out to Spirit to comment on these issues and they have not responded. Miriam Webster is out with its new word of the year. New tonight, what it is and how it was inspired by the election. Witnesses could only watch in horror. Brand new information tonight after a tree falls on a wedding party. This is hard work giving, but these two businessmen do it to help others. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Nearly 40 families will get gifts just like that mother here at the NICU unit at Henry Ford. Thanks to these two little businessmen, their amazing story coming up. Is the season for family, friends, and fun. Don't let thieves ruin your plans. Oh, I'm just really uh, diligent. I'm watching the home, making sure that I'm being safe. You lock your doors and keep lights on, but you could be making one mistake outside. That's inviting crooks to target your home. The local board of vendors help you protect yourself tomorrow, starting at 5. Get the 20... New at 6. Though Michigan's Electoral College nominated Donald Trump as president, the election fallout continues. And on Local 4, we'll have an update on the statewide audit. All right, Coco, also a bizarre situation at Somerset Mall this weekend where two cars go up in flames on two different days in the same parking garage. What the mall is saying about it. All right, this is a great story. This is Andrew and Nate Austin. Now, you wouldn't notice it by looking at them, but these two brothers have really been through a lot. They sure have. Both were born premature at Henry Ford Hospital's NICU, and today they came back to give back to the families going through the same thing. Our Jamie Edmonds shows us how. So the gifts have arrived before the gift givers, but as you can see, it's a well-run operation. I mean, they have their own logo and everything. This is 11-year-old Nate and 10-year-old Andrew, wheeling in the last of the Christmas presents they brought to the Henry Ford Hospital Neonatal Intensive Care Unit. There's teddy bears, there's inspirational CDs, there's a flyer. Both Austin brothers were here when they were born, and now that they've grown up to be big and strong, they want to bring cheer to other families in the same position. Thank you. <laughs> Shanavia Tinsley is here with her 58-day-old son. So I hope and pray that um, my son does grow up and he'll be able to give back 
um, and share his story like you guys were. You guys were a blessing. Brothers and also business partners who at age three and four started a company, the Austin Brothers Company. It's their faces on the logo, their business plan to help children of the world. Uh, because we understand that helping children is important. Children are the future. They're going to grow up to be the adults of this world. All year round, CEO Nate and CFO Andrew hold fundraisers and raise money for kids. Today, 36 families with children in the NICU will receive gifts from the brothers, proving giving is as easy as ABC. Your fear is bigger than your dream. You won't get anywhere. But if your dream is bigger than your fear, you can do whatever you want. Now, this is not the only thing the Austin brothers do throughout the year. They do a turkeys for tots around Thanksgiving and a school supply drive just before school. This is their financial report. Clearly an up-and-coming company with a very bright future. At Henry Ford Hospital, Jamie Edmonds, Local 4.